ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಂದ್ಯಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಲಿಥೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈಗುರುವೆ ನಮ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನಾರಂ ಶೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಚತೋಜ್ಜಾಯ ಮುಡೀರ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕ್ಯಾಂಥೋ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫೋರ್ ದ ಹಂಸ ಘೂಯ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಎಂಡ್ ವರ್ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಎಟ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಏಟೀನ್ ಯಥಾಸಾರ್ಜಭೂತಾಜಸ್ಯೂತಾಜ್ರೀಟೆಡ್ ಭೂತಾನಿ ದ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎಂಟಿಟೀಸ್ ದಕ್ಷ ದಕ್ಷ ದುಹಿತ್ರವತ್ಸಲ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಅಫೆಕ್ಷನೇಟ್ ಟು ಇಸ್ ಡಾಟರ್ಸ್ ರಿತಸ ಬೈ ಸೀಮನ್ ಮನಸ ಬೈ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಚ ಓಸೋ ಇಂಡೀಡ್ ಥಟ್ ದಟ್ ಮಮ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮೀ ಅವಹಿತ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಅಟೆಂಟಿವ್ ಶೃಣು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಶುಕದೇವ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮೀ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಅಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಹೌ ಪ್ರಜಾಪತಿ ದಕ್ಷ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಅಫೆಕ್ಷನೇಟ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಡಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿಟೀಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಹಿಸ್ ಸೀಮನ್ ಎಂಡ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಹಿಸ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರಿಪೀಟ್ ಶುಕದೇವ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ Please hear from me with great attention how Prajapati Daksha who is very affectionate to his daughters created different types of living entities through his semen and through his mind. Purport. The word Duhitra Vatsala indicates that all the Prajas were born from Daksha's daughters. Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says that apparently Daksha had no son. Once I read a speech, a devotee asked Prabhupada on the morning walk about what would happen if everybody became renounced and then didn't produce children. And he said, he asked that there wouldn't be any more children. people here in the world. I probably said, yes, we, would love, we want that. <laughs> so there's a, a dilemma in the idea of creation because, as mentioned by the personified Vedas, the creation is for two reasons. It's given as an opportunity for the living entities to enjoy the material world. And at the same time, its ultimate purpose is to offer a chance for living entities to go back home, to purify themselves, and attain uh, their original position as servants of Krishna. And Krishna is facilitating everyone by giving various kinds of bodies, 8,400,000 species of bodies are various kinds of facilities because of the varied consciousness of the living entities and their particular desires which become mixed with the modes of goodness, passion, and ignorance. And in acts of creation, there's always imperfection. As Krishna mentions in the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, there's smoke when there's fire and similarly in activities that are part of this creation there's also some fall inevitably and whenever there's creation there's also destruction so daksha is in a 
situation, as will be revealed more and more in this chapter, in which he's been deputed to create, but it's not the most <clears throat> um, ideal service. He prays to the Supreme Personality of God and in these Hamsaguya prayers, which are actually extremely deep and beautiful prayers, but his underlying purpose is to be able to propagate more and more. And Prabhupada comments that this is not the ideal kind of prayer to the Supreme Personality of Godhead that please empower me to propagate more and more in this world. So somewhat of a dilemma. He also mentions, and we know all of us from reading the Bhagavatam about how Kardama Muni had meditated for 10,000 years and then getting the darshan of the Lord prayed to Lord Narayan in beautiful ways as well and then said and by the way I, I need a wife and Lord Narayan said I know because I know everything I've already arranged it she'll be here in three days and the, there's a purport in that section in which Prabhupada mentions that everyone is not expected to be on the highest level of realization and therefore one must act according to one's nature in relationship with the Lord and one's service. Sway Sway Adhikarya Nishta Saguna Parikirtita as mentioned in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's a good quality when one follows one's nature to and does, according to one's capacity, the best service that one can. So, Kardamamuni, as Prabhupada said, he had only a slight desire, but still he approached the Supreme Personality of Godhead and asked for that. There was a wife, but soon afterwards he left. So, Daksha is a little more involved with the mode of passion and interested in, in the process of creation. We hear from this verse that he creates both through a seminal discharge and also th through the power of his mind. So these are not ordinary living entities. They're especially empowered to create. And that creative impetus we find everywhere in the material world. But those who are seers of the truth understand the difference between that impetus for creation in the material world and that which is permanent. Nasato vitite bhavo, nabhavo vitite sata, ubayora vitushton tas twaneos tatvadarshibi. The seers of tattva, of that which actually exists, analyze very carefully what's most important, that which is permanent. And they see also that which is non-permanent. And they know how to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. said, There's a difference in worshiping that which is supreme and that which is not supreme. We get a different result. So it's wise to understand the difference between the two. That which is permanent and that which is impermanent. It's been explained by those who are dhira, who have seen the truth. So we're, we're given this clear idea of the material world and its various phases of creation throughout the Bhagavatam. There are many stages in which the material world is manifest and created. And it's also simultaneously being annihilated. In fact, there are annihilations that take place on regular schedule. And as mentioned in the Tattva Sandarbha, one of the phases of creation is called continuous 
uh, one of the phases of destruction that is, is called continuous destruction, one that's always intrigued me, or the one that I can relate to the most. Because <laughs> I find that everything in my environment is falling apart constantly. Do you find that? Thank you. Glad you do also. And so the material world is always in flux. And uh, ultimately, Bhagavatam points us in the direction of becoming detached from the temporary material world and fixed on the ultimate goal of life. When we read recently the third and fourth cantos of the Bhagavatam, there's detailed descriptions given by Narada Muni to King Prachindabarhi about, uh, he gives a story about Puranjana, which is an indirect way of telling the king about his own life and what's going to happen if he continues the way he is. And Narada Muni explains the creative impetus. There's a way in which there's the attractive force between male and female, and he gives the natural progression of this Puranjana who becomes attracted to a woman, meets in a park and strikes up a conversation and then is married and goes on to have offspring and lives his life and enjoys and then is forced to leave his body and then forced to take another birth. And having that kind of perspective of both the overall creation and destruction of the material world and also seeing how it takes place within the life of an individual in the world, it gives a very important perspective to everyone who reads the Bhagavatam about how we're moving through this world in a very temporary way and how the general impetus is for becoming entangled in the material world and finding oneself helpless and then offering the ultimate solution which is to become fixed in one's uh, spiritual practice and to develop a relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead and we have the means to do that, especially by the process of, of shravanam, kirtanam, and the other processes of devotional service through which we can purify our senses, and still, while working in the world, not become involved or to remain detached from the workings of the material world, the creation and the annihilation. We can become a will remain aware that we are not permanent fixtures in this material world. We actually have nothing to do with the material world. And this is uh, something that requires quite a bit of cultivation and practice in order to attain because we're being pulled as soon as we're born in this world from the lower nature and at the same time human beings have the capacity to think in higher ways therefore the Vedas call out to us Atato Brahma Jignasa so take, take the opportunity try to improve yourself ask higher questions there's that kind of impetus as well so humans are kind of in the middle of the the, the creation itself. In fact, the er earthly planet is squarely situated in the middle of the universe and human beings are always in anxiety. Animals are always fearful. Demigods are always joyful. And human beings are always in anxiety. Do you find that? You're all humans, right? Do you find you're always in anxiety? 
did you say yes? yes. Or you just said, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you said. Very often. I just wanted to check in, because I always am. And when I read the other day that humans are naturally in anxiety, I felt better about my life, because that's just the way it is. We're pulled from both sides, but we're not meant to be joyful all the time. Human life is meant specifically for, for yagya, which does make one joyful. By that uh, tension, when we direct that towards yagya, then we become actually joyful. So it's a great opportunity in human life. So these uh, descriptions of, of daksha, on one side, seem quite fantastical about uh, someone who can create in by conjuring uh, from within the mind. But if we look at the Bhagavatam as a whole, and we see how systematic it is in describing, at least in a summary way, how the creation unfolds, uh, it's not so uh, fantastical. It's actually very reasonable. Because everything comes from somewhere. And if you ask uh, creationists where things come from, they can't give the steps. This was something that um, Sariputta Prabhu used to talk about when he would challenge the evolutionists. And they'd say, well, the monkey became a human. And then he'd say, okay, well, the brain has to become bigger, much more facility, uh, and, and provide much more facility. And they say, yeah, it just changed and became bigger. So that can happen with a cloud because the cloud can be small and it gets a little bit bigger. But with the brain, it's a lot more complex. And in order to prove your theory, you'd have to tell us what the steps were. How did, how did, the, how did the neurons manifest? And what were the actual stages that it, that it took to do that? So in the matters of um, creation, you can just say it all just was created. Uh, or you can describe the steps and Nowhere else will you find such a detailed description of the, the various steps that take place in creation, but in the Srimad Bhagavatam, and in such great detail. But because in the material world, people tend to be ignorant, it's rather shocking to hear details sometimes. Details about the Supreme Personality of Godhead, or about the creation and so forth, it seems almost in some ways, it it's, it's almost seems, um, I don't know, even grotesque sometimes to people because they're so used to um, not getting such information or, or ignoring it or not even wanting to have it. I remember distributing, I was in the Denver airport for some years and I distributed, we, were, we would distribute whatever books were given to us at the time. There was a supply chain and we'd just be at the airport all day and then and then uh, whenever a new book was published, they just drive it out to the airport and say, here, distribute this now. <laughs> so we'd be midstream and then we'd get a new book. It's like, okay, <laughs> excuse me, sir, take this. <laughs> Individual Bhagavatams. But I remember distributing a second canto Bhagavatam to a cowboy. And he gets a second canto. How does a cowboy get a second canto Bhagavatam? <laughs> That's true, Prabhupada's arrangement. But he came back later and he said, give me my money back. <laughs> I said, why? He said, just give me my money back. <laughs> and uh, he, he, had his, he had his finger marked in, a, in one of the pages after I gave his money back. Then he handed me the book with the page open. And it was a description of the universal form, which goes into some detail. I mean, a lot of detail. And I won't go into any more detail about the detail, but... <laughs> It, he was shocked <laughs> about the details that it goes into, and uh, and I, I was I just stood there thinking it was a existential moment you know when I was thinking uh, you know what what do people think of these books and you know how how can living entities digest information about the supreme personality of Godhead as as given in the Srimad Bhagavatam there's so much uh, clear detail it takes a while to adjust to that it takes a, a lifestyle change in order to be able to accommodate all that. 
So it's a systematic process to imbibe what's in the Bhagavatam and, and the information that's there and the implications of that, what it means to us in general and how we're involved in the creation and the ways in which we're creating and have creative impetus and then understanding that it, that it has an original source and understanding there's a difference between the internal and the external energies and then becoming oriented towards the internal energy and transferring our interests from personal interest to interest in serving the Supreme Personality of God, Godhead, Atmanam, Atmanam, because he's the soul of our soul. And as Prahlad Maharaj says, that there's a way in which when we realize that uh, he's the soul of our soul, then the same kind of investment I'm making in my own uh, well-being, I realize by giving, by giving that to Krishna and Yajna, I'm, I'm actually benefiting. And otherwise, it's a separated endeavor, and I, I don't actually get anything from it. So now we'll take some reflections. Anything that you heard so far that stuck in your mind, or if you want to bring up a stimulating question that will bring the conversation in a new direction. Yes, Prabhu. Earlier part of your discussion, you were mentioning how Daksha was praying for be able to propagate the entities and how that's not the best sort of prayer, but it was acting according to its position. Sway, sway, so oftentimes we have a hard time processing this in our own spiritual life, like being idealistic and then just being realistic. And it's like one of the, I like to call it a moral tension that's hard to navigate. Like when I'm offering prayers, should I offer prayers ideally? Like, dear Lord, I pray only for pure devotion to you. But it's like, eh, but let me be more realistic. I have this desire and I'm really bewildered because, so how do we know how to navigate that? And I'm also, also thinking about Nehemiah Madraha, not clinging too tightly but not clinging tightly enough to rules. And I think Bhakti Thakur discusses this sway sway adhikara in the context of Niyamagraha. Like clinging too tightly to a safe position when I can be moving forward, but not clinging tightly enough. So I was wondering if you had any insights on this. Well, there's, there's uh, Krishna gives a lot of, uh, has a lot of empathy. First of all, he likes humans. He says so in the 11th canto, so feel happy, everybody. <laughs> Krishna likes you. And then there's, there's a way in which he also understands the various phases that uh, spiritual practitioners go through. For instance, jata shada makkata su nirvinat sarva karma su veda dukat makam kamams prityagi panishvara tobhijeta maam prita shrada lurjuna nishchaya jushamanams tatam karamams Dukkha Darkams Jagarayam. He describes, does Krishna, the, the interim situation where one has awakened faith in hearing his glories but, and understands the futility of material enjoyment in uh, entertaining the senses in the material world. He knows that it leads to misery, but still, Prityagi Panishwari doesn't have the power to um, not engage. So Krishna says, it's all right, go on, be happy uh, with the fact that you're on the path. Tatobhajay tamam prita, shradarlu jrnanishchaya, continue with, with faithfully on the process. Um, and uh, you can um, be a little repentant, but don't become chronically uh, morose about the fact that uh, you're not in the situation you want to be in. And there's a lot of encouragement uh, Krishna says, of course, um, in the ninth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Apichet Sudarachado Pachite Mamananya Pak, Sadhariva Samanta Vyasam Yavasatohi Saha. That is, if one is situated properly, then now that the faith is there, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God, and despite all uh, one, one's others, uh, all, uh, despite having all kinds of other disqualifications, if one has that and is determined to serve Krishna, despite one's other uh, disqualifications, then 
he says, Shri Pram Bhavati Dharma Shashvash Chantim Nagashati. That he'll become, he'll be successful by continuing in that way. And so, uh, in a practical sense, as far as offering prayers honestly, that I may not feel like offering a prayer that, uh, Krishna, you do whatever you want with me. Like Prithu Maharaj says, like a, a child uh, prays the father, is like, I don't know what to do, you, you decide. <laughs> uh, are you willing to do that? Do you, is your heart in it? And so forth. And uh, maybe not. So, of course, the Bhagavatam says, akama sarva kamo va, moksha kamo tarati. It's always encouraging us, whatever you have, bring it to Krishna, because you've become purified. And there's so many stories about that, like Dhruva Maharaj, etc. And Krishna says, chatur vidā bhajante mam jada sukritino arjuna, names the different motivations that people have in approaching him, and says, udarak sarva evaite, they're all magnanimous, because they're approaching me. And as a practical matter, we have uh, prayers by the, the great acharyas. For instance, uh, singing the prayers of Bhaktivinoda Thakur in the uh, Amara Jivana, where he's uh, showing the heart of, of a pure devotee as uh, this, this uh, sense of dainya, or utter humility. And uh, I find that when devotees read that together, uh, they uh, resonate with that, even though one may not be on that level. Uh, one resonates with that. In fact, when we had a copy of the Sharanagati and we were reading that together when I was having programs at my house, all the devotees said, I got to have that. I have to have a copy of this <laughs> because I want to read it again and again. It invokes that. It's sort of a following the footsteps of the great acharyas and reading their prayers is very powerful. It invokes that feeling by, uh, you know, catching on to, to their energy, their devotional energy. And at the same time, uh, as you mentioned, the Niyamagraha, I believe it's in the Chaitanya Shikshamrita where Bhaktivinoda Thakur talks about how uh, one shouldn't uh, try to move too fast. He quotes Sway Sway Adhikari Anishta. And it's like he said it's like climbing a ladder. And he said, if you, if you try to run up the ladder without putting your feet on the rungs uh, squarely, then you slip. He said, but also, if you, if you don't move up to the next rung, when you, when you have the opportunity, then he says, your advancement will be distant, take you a long time. And he, he compares it, as you said, to Niyamagraha. So I think that uh, there's, there's that balance that we have to um, be very uh, aware of our situation and relating to Kardama Muni, that he had some desire. And Brahma said, it's okay. It's, it's, it's actually uh, reasonable to uh, perform at the level that you're at. It's a good quality. So do that. And at the same time, hold on to the concept of pure devotional service by following the footsteps of the great acharyas and uh, praying the prayers that they prayed and try, and try to enter into that. And in, and in time, one will come to that situation and be able to um, genuinely feel like that and express the, that uh, utter dependence on Krishna, as he recommends in the Bhagavad Gita, just completely depend on me, don't worry about anything else. I basically just re repeated what you said. I hope, for, I hope for, there was something in it that was helpful. Any other reflections? Yes, Prabhu. When you put the book in their hand and they take it? Yeah, is it, is it like, uh, it's like a divine intervention? That you know, somehow convinces them like they've been rejecting Krishna since life and it's all of a sudden. Yeah, it's a great mystery. Yeah. It's 
great mystery. And uh, last night when we, we were coming back from the program, we got in the cab, uh, and the, the driver said, are you guys Krishnas? I said, we sure are. And, and he goes, yeah, I got a question for you. What was this question, Virabhadra? He said, I, I was listening to a... a yeah, he said there was something on the radio. It was some program he was listening to, and a question came up. Said, "How come you don't see Hari Krishnas in airports anymore?" So I, I gave him a summary of that, and then and then he said, "So why did it come up?" And he he said, "Oh, well, it was a whole discussion about meditation." He said it was hard for me to. Uh, he said it was hard for me to relate to what they were saying. He said, "What were they saying?" He said, "Well, they were saying your soul's different from the body." He said, you know, I can understand that, but I, I kind of, in some ways, I don't want to understand it. <laughs> and he was very honest and open, and then soon the Bhagavad Gita was uh, being thrust up to, his, up to the driver's seat. And he went, okay, great. And, and by the time we got out, you know, he took the, the book and he gave a donation, and he, he said, this is the best best ride I've ever taken in my life. And we felt like it was something out of a, um, you know, a staged Hare Krishna movie or something. <laughs> but those mysteries, it's because Virabhadra Prabhu then said, you know, I canceled the other cab and then got this cab instead. So who, who knows what Krishna has in mind uh, for, for living entities. But we do the best we can to represent. And there, there is a there is an interim, there's a, a point at which uh, our enthusiasm, our desire to take can inspire others to take when they might not have done before. And that's why we go to the trouble to do it. I mean, as I, Krishna Samaham Sarva he remains, he remains neutral. But then Prabhupada said, the devotees, they're not so neutral because they understand the purpose of creation. So they really go for it, and they try to bring things up to another level and interest people. They're, they're always uh, working with everything to try to get people closer, Let's try to um, attract their attention. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did it too. He changed into sannyasi dress to attract people so they you know, get more involved in the movement. It's been, yes, Prabhu? Yeah, two against one, that's right. That's why they, at the San Francisco airport, where they gave us a booth, and they had in the paperwork, when we'd sign it, they say, no double teaming. Because <laughs> they, observ they observed us, and they saw if there was two devotees against one person, they were, like, helpless, you know? So they said, you can't double team. <laughs> yeah, so overwhelming force. That's why we try to really overwhelm people as much as possible. Virabhadra Prabhu, you were going to say? Yeah. Actually, with a car, with a book, with, and your disciples with you in the car. And the the gitas came out, and the candies, and the cards, and yeah. just seeing that. Yeah, yeah. Always in preparation, because even if you don't want to do it, if you're prepared, Krishna will force you. And we've seen that so many times. Uh, you know, if, if you're ready for it, and you, you're out somewhere, then then Krishna will say, okay, this person's ready, even though they're not into it, they'll send somebody to induce, they'll send somebody else and go, hey, what do you got there? Give me that thing, you know? I mean, there's many stories like that we can go into that are, uh, that are true stories, absolutely nothing fabricated, where Krishna, where Krishna does that. So it, it's a good point. If we're just prepared, even if, if, if our mood isn't the same when we go out, then Krishna will make the arrangement. And we should always be preparing because the material energy will overwhelm us if we don't stay in that preparatory mode always for ourselves. So that's why we're all here together and practicing every single day. You can't skip a day because then you'll be overwhelmed. So stay, stay in prepared mode. I thank you all very much. It's been such a wonderful visit here. I mean, it's, it's great.
heartrending to see what you're all doing here. It, it's, it's amazing. And it, this is a beacon for the whole world. So keep up the great work. And I can't wait to see you all again. I'm leaving for Jagannath Puri today for our, our Yatra. And um, I, I can't wait to get back. I'll be, frankly, I'll be counting the minutes till I, I come, come back here and be in your association. Thank you very much. Go pray, Manande. Haribo! Not to the arm, 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 Not to the arm,